What's up everybody? Welcome to Practical Alchemy, the show where I take you through a hands-on approach to 3D modeling. Now, on today's episode, we're going to be doing a Ryan tutorial, and actually we're going to be doing a big project. We're going to be doing a four-part series, which is going to teach you how to make a Keyblade from Kingdom Hearts. It's a great video game. I love it. I've wanted to build a Keyblade for a really long time, um, and just now I'm getting around to doing that. But what we're going to do, obviously, the first thing you're going to say is, Jonathan, you can't fit this Keyblade in a 3D printer. No, you can't. But what I'm going to teach you to do is I'm going to try to teach you how to build the hilt and the blade components while using a PVC pipe from Home Depot. Super easy, super simple as the main blade of your sword. All right, so you should be able to get it. Your file will match up perfectly. I promise it's going to be awesome. So here we go. Part one. Hopefully this won't take us 10 years to do like Kingdom Hearts 3. Seriously, it's been a decade, almost. It's been eight years. I was a sophomore in college. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is we are gonna do this little Mickey emblem right down here, the keychain that goes on the edge of your sword. This is going to be a fairly basic surfacing tutorial, but what I'm gonna teach you is an advanced technique for doing surface fillets. All right, so let's hop over to Rhino, and we're gonna open up a new file. No, and we're gonna do inches. Okay, so first off, let me show you why I'm teaching you this. Um, actually, no, I'm not, I'm not gonna do that, sorry. All right, <laughs> just go ahead and import our Keyblade. Support files, no, ah, wrong folder, sorry, 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 sorry. All right, ooh, web show. Uh, Mickey Mouse Keychain, we're gonna open up our AI file, and this is our Keyblade reference. We created our Rhino file in inches, and so we are going to create our Mickey emblem in inches as well. Okay, should be full scale. All right, we got a lot of stuff here, and we don't need 85% of it. So go ahead and delete most of that, and zoom in on your Mickey emblem here. And now we're just gonna go ahead and file, save, and we'll save that where it is. I'll move it later. All right, go ahead and rename your default layer to your initial sketch layer. Okay, so got our Mickey keychain. We got the basic line work in place. First thing that we need to do is create one solid surface slash um, solid that makes this shape. So go ahead and take these circles and split them. Split, use those as your cutting objects. Delete, ah, delete those parts. And now here we go, same thing over here. Whoops, missed a command, missed selected one, delete. Select these as your cutting objects. Nope, there it is. All right, and boom. Okay, now select all these surfaces, edit, join them together. I know some of you guys are probably like really annoyed that I use these menus. I do it because it's easier for you to see the commands and for those of you who are learning this stuff still, it's easier to figure out where the commands are um, in the menu. So I'm not just like, oh, do a join and you have no idea where a join is. You're gonna learn where a join is. Okay, and maybe also the keyboard shortcuts, but I don't use them. I actually keep my other hand on a 3D mouse, which I'll show you someday. It's really cool. It allows me to navigate a little bit easier. Um, so I can't really do keyboard shortcuts because my hands are not on the keyboard. Okay, we've got this join. Let's go and create a solid from that. Okay, and let me switch my layer. I'm gonna come over to the purple layer and we're gonna call this the keychain body. There it is. Okay, click on that layer to activate it. And what we're gonna do now is we're going to solid extrude planar curve straight. That's gonna allow us to create a solid. You can see it's extruding into 3D space into the Z plane. And I'm gonna say 0.125 is how tall I want this little guy to be. Cool. And if I turn on my shaded view in the perspective viewport, you can see that I've got a nice little keychain here. Okay, now, next up, let's go ahead and explode this into multiple surfaces. All right, now, 
We've got a bunch of different surfaces. We don't need this bottom surface. We're going to delete that because eventually what we're going to do is just do the blends. We want to radius all these corners. We'll do that on half of it and then just mirror it over so we don't have to do it twice. Okay. So what I want to show you now, go ahead and join those back together for a second. Why are we doing this tutorial? You're like, what well, surface to just use the fill command. Every other tutorial you show me, I've just done the surface command. Well, here is why. Let me take you and we're going to make a quick cube here. Box, corner, corner, height, boom, boom, boom. Okay. A lot of things that I've done so far have had fairly square corners. And so when you go through and you just say solid, fill it edge, fill it, the fillets are pretty simple. It goes. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> all right, except when you do it like that. All right, most of the time the fillets are pretty simple. You do that, it rounds the corners, everything's nice, it creates all these little bevels. Here's the problem. When you've got more complex surfaces like this, I'm gonna just do a simple test, 0.05, and I'm gonna change the layer just to make it a little bit easier to see what's happening. I already know what's going to happen. And you go in and try to fill at this edge. You can see, don't even worry about that, that it can't do it. It didn't trim your initial surfaces. I had trimming on, but it didn't trim my initial surfaces. Why? Because it's too complicated. It can't figure it out. Look at this. We've got these two circles intersecting here. It doesn't know. It The, the, the trim is too big, but I don't want to round these corners. So I can't actually use this, all right? It's no good. I'm just going to undo that. Okay. So there we go. Now, what I want to do, so instead, what we have to do is we need to go through and build those fillets manually, okay? So the first thing that I'm going to do is, let me do that. Um, the first thing that I'm going to do is I need to, change this layer to blue. I'm going to rename it my working layer. When you make a fillet and you typically use the fillet command, what it does is not only does it trim back these surfaces to create the new edge, but it also then does a blend surface. So we're just going to go through those same steps manually. Okay. So the first step is to just trim these surfaces back. And what we're going to do is we are going to split them exactly in half. And the way that we're going to do that is use the split command again, and we're going to split by the ISO curve. If you haven't heard me explain ISO curves before, basically ISO curves are the lines that use the what we call the U direction and the V direction. I'm just switching over to the V direction to define the edges of these surfaces and all the things that are happening internally in these surfaces. So you just you can toggle between the U direction and the V direction. I don't know why they're called the U and V directions. I really don't. It was explained to me once. I totally forgot it. All right, we've got the midpoint snap turned on. So what we're going to do is we're just going to snap to the midpoint of that line and then delete it. Okay. Same thing over here. Delete. Delete. Oh, we got a double surface. We got a little something, something going on over here. I don't know what that is. All right. Sorry, this is boring. I could probably move faster. This isn't like a cooking show where I go ahead and rebuild everything first, and then I just show you, and it's magically I've got another oven. It doesn't work like that. I don't have time for that. All right. <laughs> I'm just building real time. Here we go. Okay, so we've trimmed back this surface. How are we going to trim back this top surface? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to take our initial sketch curve. We're going to slide it up so that I can see it. And we're going to do offset it. So we're going to do an offset curve. So curve, offset curve. Well, let's go point 0.2. Might be a little too big. Mm, that's too big. Control Z. File, save, just quick save. All right, there we go. All right, let's go. Let's see. Surface, curve, offset curve. Let's go point, what do we do? One. Nope, still too big. Point oh seven five. Nope, still too big. Point oh five. 
Yeah, there it is. That'll work. That's aggressive, um, but it, it'll work. Okay, now just go down here and we're going to say edit, split. We split that using that. And we've got two pieces. And we can now delete that outer Mickey surface. Okay, pretty good. So, what we would do next is we're going to use a blend command. A blend is a super awesome command that lets you create a connection between two surfaces. And not only that, but it's amazingly versatile in how that it matches those surfaces up. So we use it, surface, blend surface, and you just select the two edges that you want to blend together. As you can see, I've got a couple different options here. Curvature continuity, uh, continuity is the main one that you're gonna mess with. Um, now, let me go ahead and select my two surfaces, hit enter. Okay, so, and I'm gonna turn a preview on. Now, continuity basically defines how tangent something is. If you guys are familiar with the concept of tangency, that's basically when you round a corner and then it's, it's tangent means that it comes out perpendicular to that surface at the point where it intersects. Curvature continuity basically means you've got two um, points that define that curvature, not just one. A tangency relationship has a single point that defines the curvature. Uh, let's explain this real quick. All right, so let's say I've got a line here, okay? If I wanna make a curve tangent to it, does it get real technical, real technical. If I wanna make a curve tangent to it, I make one point that goes off in the direction, that means it's parallel to that line, and then another point that's off in space another direction. This line is now tangent to both this curve and to this curve, okay? Now, a curvature continuity means that you have two points that define your tangency relationship in either direction. Okay, so what does that get you? Why do I need that? Um, that is going to not only match the edge, but it's also going to do a better job of matching the flow of the curve. Okay, it doesn't really matter on a square corner. I probably shouldn't have used that as the example. But anyway, it's just going to give you a smoother transition. A lot of times when you're working with complex surfaces though, or complex surface relationships, a curvature relationship is just not that feasible. Anyway, okay, let's go back and do our surface, blend surface. So I'm gonna blend from here to here and turn the tangency to G1, which is tangency um, continuity, not curvature continuity. I've got a couple of things that I can modify here. I can modify the start points so I can modify where these curves start and stop blending. See, by default, it goes all the way to the edge, but I can pull that back. And I can also, by adjusting the handles, handle one and handle two, adjust how smooth it is, okay? So you can see that I've set it to one, which is just kind of standard. If I want it to blend sharp, more sharply, um, I can pull that back. Um, and when you switch over to your rendered view, you can see that that gives me a nice smooth curve, okay? But here's the problem with this. There's problems. I took you down a rabbit hole. You didn't want to go. This wasn't the right thing to do. The problem with this is that there's no way for me to get into these corners here. There's no way for me to do that. So I need to be do something a little bit different, okay? So... Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna keep our working files on. Let's turn the sketch layer off because it's getting a, things are getting a little bit busy. Let's turn this off. Edit visibility high. So how do we do this knowing that a blend surface isn't going to work? Well, there's another way that we can create a tangency relationship between surfaces, and that's by using the sweep to rails command. Right? Sweep to rails will allow you to select edges and create a blended surface a surface between them and one of the things that you can select is how the edge relationship works we can select a tangency relationship the problem is we got no cross sections right now we have nothing defining the cross section so if we want this to be um, bevel or I'm sorry tangent we need to create a curve that is tangent 
to this corner at the end point. Okay, so I've already got a curve here that I can use, but I don't have a curve here. So what I'm gonna do is use my curve tool and I'm just gonna create some straight lines between the points that I'm going to use as my corners. All right, just straight line between the points that I'm going to use as my corners, okay? Now, go to the top view. You can see that this line is now going straight across, okay? What I'm going to do is I'm gonna select all of these curves and I'm going to flatten them out. You can see from the side, because I've selected those two endpoints and locked to that, that the curves are at an angle. So what I'm gonna do is say transform set points and now I'm gonna select a control plane that I want them to be set in, okay? That's gonna basically take all those little control points and move them into a flat 2D plane, which I have defined, okay? I've defined the Z plane because I want them to move this way, okay? Let me make this layer bright green so you can see it. Okay, now, here's what I wanna do. Basically what I need is I need a line that is on this surface that is following this line. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the F10 key to turn all of these control points on. F10, F10. Now, I wanna extend this curve so that I can then project it down onto that surface. To make sure that I keep it straight, what I need to do is I'm gonna turn all of my other snaps off and just turn the point snap on. That is going to snap two control points. This is a cool little trick here. If you drag this and it snaps to that point and then you hit the tab key, you will maintain that line. It will force you to push and pull the control point along the line between this point and this point. See, normally if I can select a control point, I can just move it wherever I want. But if I hold down, click and hold, hit tab while I'm still holding down my uh, clicking key, and then it pulls it and it constrains it on that line. Okay, point, tab, there it is. I'm holding, I'm clicking and holding so that I have control over that control point. Hit tab, if you hit tab again, it'll free you, all right? Tab, pull it past, not that far. Okay, perfect. Now hit F11 to turn your control points off. Save that real quick. Seriously, can you guys believe that Kingdom Hearts 3 has not come out? I Literally, that was eight years ago. There was an entire console generation. I never bought a PS3 because I said, I'm going to buy a PS3 when Kingdom Hearts comes out, and it never did. So you got Sony, you lost a PS3 buyer. Okay, moving on. I'm not bitter about it. Curve. Curve from objects. Project. Select. Not that. I don't want that. Select all of these curves and project them down onto this surface. And then you can delete the source curves. We don't need them. Okay, maximize this viewpoint. Okay, so we've got a curve on this surface and we've got a curve on this surface that are along the line that I wanna use as the cross sections of my curve. Now, go ahead and hit curve blend curves, you can see I can adjust the continuity, I can go tangent, or I can go curvature. We're not that fancy, we don't need curvature continuity, just tangency continuity is fine. It's fine, it's, that's really all we need. I don't, we're not fancy up in here. We're gonna get it done. All right, first curve, second curve, blend curve. It created a blend between these two surfaces, all right? I'm sorry, between the two curves. We're not using the surfaces. I'm using the surface edge as my other curve here. Okay, there's a curvature tangency relationship between that curve and boom. Let's save it one more time. Don't want Rhino to crash right now. We're just about to hit the exciting part, right? So here's what you're gonna do. Now that we've done all this basic work, sweep two rails. Rail one, rail two, these are my cross sections. I want a tangency relationship. 
All right, and there is our surface. So funny story, maybe that video got a little jagged there for a second. Why? Well, do you remember that time like 30 seconds ago when I said we should save our file in case Rhino crashes? Well, what did Rhino do? It, it crashed. It, it literally crashed as I was building the last surface here. Um, man, that is annoying. Uh, that was really bad. All right, so surface sweep two rails, that's why we save. Sometimes Rhino will grab an autosave file for you. Sometimes it won't. I also recommend, that didn't work. Um, I also recommend saving multiple versions of the same file every once in a while. Sometimes, not often, Rhino's pretty good about it, but sometimes Rhino will crash and in its crash, if it like happens to crash while it's autosaving, it will create a corrupted autosave. Hmm, that was weird. It'll create a corrupted autosave and then you're really boned because you cannot open up your file anymore. It's your file's bad. So save multiple versions of your file. Be safe. Uh, you know, a project like this is five, 10 minutes, so whatever, but um, there it is. All right, cool, Mickey head. Look at that, look at that. Look at what we were able to do. We did what we couldn't do with the blend tool. We are better than the blend tool. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, now, here's what I want you to do. We've got all these surfaces. Let's go ahead, we gotta test them. So, we gotta put them through the ringer. Hopefully we did a good job. Edit, join, one open poly surface, analysis, edge tools, show edges. All right, I'm not seeing any naked edges up on the sides, which is good. All these nice little seams that we built sat together nice and good. Okay, now next up, um, I'm a little bit worried about how thick this thing is gonna be once it is um, two dimensional, or I'm sorry, three dimensional after I mirror it. That's about as a little close to as thick as I wanted it. So I'm gonna join those. This is not a necessary step. You could just go from there. I'm gonna say transform scale 1D. I wanna make this line a little bit shorter. There it is, just make it a little bit shorter. Okay, go ahead and say edit, join, join all of that together. All right, it's in the keychain body layer, that's good. All right, let's, fade. let's save it real quick, just to be safe. Always wanna be safe, safety first. Typically second, but in this case, safety first. All right, and now we just say transform. <sighs> Mirror, copy, yes, we do wanna make a copy. And we can use the center, whatever, we can really use whatever. Flip that little guy over. Get over zealous. Edit, join. Do we have a closed poly surface? Yes, closed poly surface achieved. But we're not done yet. We're almost done, but we're not done yet. Save it now that we're done. Go to our blue layer. This will be our loop. I don't know if there's a technical name for the loop that comes off of a keychain, um, but whatever. Uh, let's go ahead, what we'll do is we'll do a circle. Um, ooh, we gotta realign that. We'll make sure we do that. Let's go ahead and slide this stuff up. Uh, so that it's centered in the center of our object, roughly. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to be perfect. All right, so <laughs> circle, curve, around curve. We're gonna create a donut shape real quick. So I wanna create a curve around this circle. Okay, so I can select anywhere on that circle and make it, ooh, too many snaps on, too many snaps are on. And just make it as big as I want it, which is not that big. No, that's not what I want to do. I need, a, I need another surface. Uh, I'm just gonna create a new one. New circle, snap to the center. God, what is that? Stop. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Again, I'm snapping at things that I'm not liking. Okay, let's go about there. Okay, same command, circle, around a curve. That way it's going to be normal to the curve. I'm gonna drag it out till it's about the right diameter. Then surface, sweep one rail. This is my rail, this is my cross section. 
and we got a nice little donut there. All right, and it looks good. All right, let's just make sure that there's no, there's no naked edges there. All right, file, save. One more time, and now it's time to put it all together. So, uh, since we've got two closed surfaces, it should play nice. Maybe not because it's a circle. Sometimes surfaces get weird, but so solid union. That's gonna join two surfaces that intersect together. Sometimes it's smart, sometimes it messes it up, but in this case, it looks like it got it. All right, cool. So, there it is, guys. We have a closed poly surface, no naked edges, awesome. All right, and we have our little Mickey dongle for our Kingdom Hearts Keyblade. Perfect, that's step one. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. I hope that you really learn something about blends and creating your own surface fillets, that technique is gonna be very useful to you. There's another technique that I am gonna teach you at some point uh, mm -hmm. for handling some other kinds of intersections, but this is a good technique. If you like this video, please like it. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, including the rest of the Keyblade series, hit the subscribe button. If you have any questions or if there are other objects, models, devices, gizmos, gadgets that you want to see on this show, write in the comments below. And again, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you are building these files by yourself. If you are, or if you'd like to try, which you definitely should, you should definitely learn something. Don't just take the files, build it. Um, you can find those in the comment, in the uh, description below. You can find the download links to those. I want you to work along with me. I want you to learn these skills. I want you to learn 3D CAD. It's very important. It's a great skill to have, and you can build cool stuff all the time. All right. Once again, thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Later on.